Some things are not in shortage these days. Massive quantities of money have been printed, now flooding into the system. Since credit is given away like candy, we have seen huge leverage situations occur on all levels, dangerous schemes on all fronts. You came here for the truth. Today we are going to look at several charts which I have prepared for you, beginning with this. Let's look at leverage. It is important to note that when we look at the fake GDP numbers, we will tell a fairy tale today that suggests these numbers are real. Okay. But even still, they have been escalating on a consistent basis, minor setbacks along the way. Okay. Let's just pretend for a moment. You look at leverage on all fronts, as I've said, corporate, household, margin, and banks. And this has escalated at a far more dramatic level. And the divergence between the two continues to increase. This here is a problem because this so-called real economy cannot support the weight created by all the leverage on top of it. And especially because this is on all fronts, we have to realize that there's not one that could then bail out the other. This becomes a very big problem. At what point? That's for you to decide. We need to minimize the amount of risk we take. It's very clear. People feel confident and they make their decisions based on that. However, I believe that we should really be more risk adverse at this time frame. All right, looking into the next chart. Fed balance sheet driving asset prices. I regularly show this chart. Essentially what we've had is a mirroring or a correlation between the Fed's balance sheet and the S&P 500. And there have been times when this isn't exactly accurate, but to me, it shows that since the financial crisis, these two have been moving for the most part, in lockstep ever since this moment, where you had this extreme escalation in the Fed's balance sheet while the f stock markets were coming down. And it's very clear where it has gone since. This is in the upward direction. Now, more recently, of course, ever since QE3 has stopped, you have seen this um, stagnation in the Fed balance sheet, yet in more recent months, we have seen the stock market increase. That could change at any moment. And we know when you look at it on a 10 year, 50 year, 100 year basis, you start to get, you know, that bigger picture. So we'll see how it all goes in a few years time. But regardless, during the, since the financial crisis, we have seen this correlation is very, very clear. There are six charts here, essentially showing all the same thing, that all central banks have engaged in the same policy, and that is to expand the monetary base and do it in a way that they feel is the right one. And that is simply expand to the greatest degree possible. The Fed has done it. The ECB has done it. China. England, Switzerland, Japan, all engaging in the same pos, uh, you know, project. And I believe this is all a very, very dangerous scenario that's been set up. When you see, for the most part anyway, they're all moving in lockstep. And you see the same thing, Bank of England, There's this staircase going upward. And in this case, 
China just expanding. No country is getting away without doing this policy. Not a single one. Some more than others, there's no doubt. Wells Fargo residential mortgage applications. This is something that's telling to me there is a trend over the past few years of a decline. And in the last, let's say, several months here, there has been sort of a smaller decline, but the trend is showing a decline for this specifically. And I do believe that more people, as the prices rise and as the economy worsens, you have more people renting. You have people, less people, buying into these homes. There could also be some tightening, some restrictions on real estate, but I don't see that happening. I don't really have much evidence of that. I think that it is more of the fact that prices have increased simultaneously, the economy has worsened. Gold in Turkish Lira. I mean, it's very clear to me that since the year 2000, it has skyrocketed. That's a devaluation of their currency. And then you really get to the bottom of this. And think about this for a second. If you measured gold in US dollars, which is the reserve currency, you would have an increase since the year 2000. But when you measure it like that and then compare it to different currencies or compare it to different asset classes altogether, you get a very different picture. Let's just say gold, you know, trading anywhere between, you know, let's say 1200 or so. But you can definitely see that, again, the divergence that's being created there. And all of a sudden, gold seems to be worth a lot more. And I use gold as an example. You could do this with oil. You can do this with silver. You can do it with corn and wheat and everything else. Giving you a completely different picture of that particular commodity. It's interesting to see. Mike Maloney does this a lot. You can check that out. And to me, this really shows that when we're looking at something, don't take it just for face value. You need to step outside the box a little bit and try to figure this out in a different way. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. My first book is about the four asset classes, the history, and all of the ways to profit from these. And then, the new book is about reducing your monthly expenses, tax incentives, earning income, and becoming self-sufficient. Put the two and two together, and you get yourself a very respectable, sustainable method for freedom. Take care.